If you're looking to build a new gaming PC, choosing the right CPU, GPU, and motherboard combination is in my view the best place to start. Get these three components right and it lays the groundworks for a pretty successful PC build and helps to ensure that the performance that your build delivers is in line with what you're hoping to achieve from the start. Which is why today I'll be covering the best options for a range of budgets. Whether you're looking for an entry-level 1080p gaming PC build or a top-of-the-range 4K gaming rig, we've tested some of the very best options to ensure you can't go too far wrong. Let's do this. The MSI 342C QD OLED is an epic 34 inch ultra wide monitor with a 3440 by 1440 resolution, 1800 R curvature, 175 Hz refresh rate, and low 0.03 millisecond response time. Learn more about this stunning quantum dot OLED panel at the first link below. I'm going to start off with the cheapest combos first and work through right to the most expensive. Feel free to use the timestamps below to navigate through or the links down below for latest pricing and availability. Now for the cheapest combo, rather unusually, I would recommend a last generation CPU and motherboard. Typically this isn't something that I would do, as generational gains often deliver really great performance upsides that you simply don't want to miss out on, let alone next generation features like more bandwidth, new PCI generations, and a degree of future proofing, although I don't really like to use that term. But to put it simply, the CPU market just hasn't seen that much improvement really at the budget end. AMD just point blank haven't released any Ryzen 3 CPUs in years, meaning that they're leaving really budget gamers kind of high and dry. Intel on the other hand is a slightly better story, with their i5 12400F staying true as one of the best budget CPUs even a couple of years after its first release. Now while this was updated by the 13400F, a chip that costs considerably more but doesn't exactly provide more by way of performance, just look at these numbers we've tested. In Cinebench, our favorite favorite synthetic CPU benchmark, while the 13400F is frankly a bit of a joke, as it doesn't really improve on the 13400F in any way. That makes the plucky 12400F still a great option right now. Personally, I'd pair it up with an AMD RX 7600 GPU, the 8GB model. You can commonly find this for in and around the $250 price point, the MSRP sitting slightly higher at $269, US dollars, and it's a card that will deliver exceptional 1080p performance in a wide range of titles. It would have more legs for 1440p, but AMD hamstringed it with only 8 gigs of VRAM, and their new 16 gig version is frankly too expensive and doesn't have enough memory bandwidth to actually be useful. Some people would suggest looking at other cards like the 6750XT, but this is out of budget for our entry level 1080p combo, while Nvidia's RTX 4060 is best avoided for a great number of reasons, mainly the price and the performance. What more is there to say? On the motherboard front, you don't have to go as last gen as you might think either. In fact, I would go for this Gigabyte B760 DS3H. It's a full-size ATX motherboard with Wi-Fi 6E, USB Type-C, and RAM overclocking support. Plus, it runs on the latest B760 chipset, which will support that 12400F out of the box, and gives you a bit more of that next-gen features and functionality. It's also very affordable, something Intel motherboards typically do very well, and of course gives upgrade paths right up if you wanted to, to the 14900K. Now, I'm not saying that would necessarily be a great pairing, but you could easily change this i5 out for an i7 later on this board and have no issues. Of course, we have no CPU overclocking support, but the 12400F is an overclockable anyway. And frankly, given the heat output of Intel's newer 14th gen CPUs, if you pop one of those in, you aren't gonna be able to push it hardly any further than it comes stock anyway. This then, a great 1080p combo if you're looking to spend anywhere in the region of about $500 to $600 on your CPU, motherboard, and GPU combo. If you've got a bit more money to spend though, this is where the newer generations of CPUs start to come into play, specifically AMD's Ryzen 5 7600 and 7600X. These two chips are what define my next budget-oriented CPU, motherboard, and GPU combo. Now, the X version is basically a bit of a factory overclock over the non-X derivative, and there's typically around $20 to $40 price difference between the lower and higher-end chip. If it's a difference of only $20, personally, I would go for the X, giving you those faster speeds out of the box for better single-threaded performance. Performance, particularly important for gaming at 1080p and for fast FPS titles like CSGO, Apex, Fortnite, where single threaded performance really, really matters. It's at this point that I would go ahead and recommend something like the RX 6750 XT. With the 6750 XT, not only do you get very similar levels of 1080p performance to what you'll find on the RX 7600, but the 12 gigabytes of VRAM with enough bandwidth for the memory to actually be useful allows for better 1440p numbers than on its 7600. 
600 alternative. You'll also find a bit more future-proofing with that VRAM. Again, nothing is truly future-proofed, but more VRAM is certainly the way that games are going in terms of their minimum specs and the amount that we're seeing in our benchmarking. Just look at some of these numbers in Hogwarts, for example, where on a card like this, the game will really eat up that frame buffer. As far as motherboards go, you want to opt for something like this Gigabyte B650 Gaming X AX. The B650 chipset on AMD is where I'd go as a minimum, generally speaking. That gives you overclocking support for the CPU and for the memory, which is really great, allowing you to push something like the 7600X a little bit further if you wished. A board like this gives you PCI Gen 5 support for the M.2 SSD, great to see, but none for the GPU. Not only does the 6750 XT not require it, but no modern GPU right now, as of recording this video, does. Not even the 4090. As such, you can upgrade your GPU on this board in years to come without any problems of bandwidth limitations. And frankly, if you're building a top of the range 4090 rig, you shouldn't be buying a motherboard like this. Nothing wrong with it. It's just not a good match for a top of the range component. Now, moving up to my first mid-range combo for the best CPU, GPU, and motherboard to buy. And I'm going to kind of cheat here a little bit. And I say that because the CPU and the motherboard are going to remain the same. All I would actually change here is the GPU. And that's where this comes in, the RX 7700 XT. Now, this is a card that I featured a lot on the channel recently because it's kind of aged a bit like fine wine. And that may be a phrase you've heard referred to about AMD GPUs in the past. When it first launched, it was simply too expensive and too close in price to the better RX 7800 XT. But subsequent price drops, which leave this card now around the 429 mark, as I said before, links will be in the description below, mean that this has a better positioning than when it first released. Performance is also really great. 1440p is absolutely spot on and 12 gigs of VRAM like the 6750 XT make for a really nice card. You're not going to see a huge uplift over the 6750 XT here, but certainly enough that in my mind it makes a tangible difference. And rasterization performance on a card like this is really fantastic. As with all the combos where I've recommended AMD GPUs, it's important to note that their ray tracing and DLSS equivalent technologies are still way off what Nvidia have to offer. But hearing feedback from you guys and rasterization is still the main aim of the day. Let me know in the comments below, are you gaming with ray tracing right now? I'd love to know. The CPU and motherboard stay exactly the same because they provide all the features and performance we need. We're not going to see a great deal of bottlenecking. We're not going to see the motherboard holding the 7700 XT back either. And frankly, if we jump up to this combo and blow all the extra cash on a better CPU and motherboard, we're leaving a lot of gaming performance on the table. Work up the budget echelon slightly though and move into my second, more expensive mid-range CPU, motherboard and GPU combo. And I'm afraid our plucky Ryzen 5 7600X has got to go. And that's because we need a bit more CPU performance if we're going to unlock those next stages of performance. And that's where this comes in, the RTX 4070 Super. Now the 4070 Super is actually a really, really solid GPU. It takes a little bit of flag and a little bit of heat from the RX 7800 XT, our 7700 XT's bigger brother, as it's a card that costs less, gives you more video memory, and on some occasions, similar if not slightly better performance. In my mind though, the 4070 Super is the better all-round package. That ray tracing and DLSS support is fantastic. And while as I literally just mentioned, that's not a huge factor for some people, the 4070 still provides really great bang for the buck. As you can see from our cost per frame graphs that we put together, comparing this against basically all current GPUs at 1440p. 12 gigs of VRAM is again okay. I'd have liked to have seen NVIDIA put another four gigs on here. But if you're after an NVIDIA-based approach at the mid-range, this is the GPU I'd pick up. Personally speaking, I'd pair it up with Intel's Core i5 14600K. The 14600K is one of the better CPUs in the Intel 14th gen lineup. And the advantage you get over AMD, and it's quite a big one, is the extra cores. Unlike AMD, where all of the cores are just standard cores, Intel's are split into P and E cores, performance and efficiency. The idea is, and it works pretty well in practice, that the E cores take the easier to run, less important tasks like your Chrome tabs and banging Spotify playlist and deal with all the CPU related horsepower required in the background, freeing up the more powerful P cores with those high boost clock speeds to deal with the gaming applications or video editing applications, the thing that's the most prominent and demanding on your system at any one time. That allows the CPU to have better multi-core and better single core performance than its direct AMD rivals. To give you an idea, AMD's Ryzen 7 7700X is probably the closest thing price-wise to a 14600K and it's just not that great by comparison when you look at some of those gaming benchmarks. As far as motherboards go, you don't want to go too high-end, but if you can afford to jump up to the higher-end Z790 chipset, I would certainly recommend that you do so. Now, the reason for that is that because on the Z790 chipset, you're going to get much better 
they're overclocking support, something the 14600K will appreciate. Better power delivery, more features. It's a quality of life thing above all else. You also get more bandwidth and expandability, better I.O. and connectivity, and often access like on this board to Wi-Fi 7, which is gonna give you those next gen networking speeds. More entry level Z790 boards can often be found for under the $200 mark, which is not too bad and prices will fall on these as time progresses. We like the Z790 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi and it supports 14th gen CPUs out of the box. Lovely stuff. But what if you want really amazing 1440p performance or better 4K gaming? Well, that is where my next three combinations come in. And they start with the Humble RX 7900 XT. Now, this is another one of AMD's GPUs that's just getting better and better. When it first reviewed, people said it was good but overpriced. And AMD have listened. They've dropped the price on this from $899 to, wait for it, $700. What? It delivers amazing 1440p and great 4K gaming performance. And pairs up really, really nicely with something like the AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D. What's kind of crazy is that this GPU comes in at $700, the CPU at about $300, and a good B650 or preferably entry-level X670E motherboard is going to give you a combo that just can't be beaten. A great motherboard would be the MSI X670E Tomahawk Wi-Fi. The Tomahawk range, as we looked at just a moment ago, provides a more entry-level experience to the high-end chipsets and, generally speaking, delivers great value for money. The pretty special thing about this combo too is our 7800X3D processor. You get AMD's 3D cache where they actually stack the cache on top of each other, giving you more than triple the cache you'll find on the direct Intel alternative. And the L3 cache on a modern CPU is a big deal. In fact, it's one of the biggest bottlenecks that you'll find, allowing AMD to unlock a lot of extra performance here. The only downside with this combo, and the CPU specifically I suppose, is that multi-core performance. 8 cores and 16 threads is less than you'll find on the i7-14700. K, a chip that's going to deliver far, far higher core counts if multi-threaded performance is what you're after. Now, if you want to spend even more money than this, and I'm running out of space for GPUs and CPUs and everything, the 4080 Super kicks off my penultimate high-end CPU, motherboard, and GPU combo. It's NVIDIA's latest GPU that delivers a price drop over the original 4080 of about $200. It doesn't provide really any more performance, but that's fine because it's a lot cheaper and better value for money, and pairs up, again, really nicely with something like the AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D. The 14700K is also worth considering here, and I'll link a good high-end Intel motherboard to consider for this combo down below. I think as well at this price point, some of the NVIDIA exclusive features are also worth considering. Yes, for most people, rasterization is the most important GPU performance metric, and there are lots of you watching right now who just don't really care about ray tracing in DLSS. But DLSS 3 and 3.5, especially with frame generation, can be incredibly powerful and a great way to unlock a lot of extra performance on that top end. If it was me, I'd rather at the high end pay a small price premium for an NVIDIA GPU than lose out on some of those NVIDIA exclusive features. To be clear, I don't love the way that that's how it works, but I suppose the game's the game. Now to wrap things up on the very top end, what would I recommend if you want the best of the best? It's a pretty easy one. The 14900K, an RTX 4090 and a high end Z790 motherboard. Something like the Asus Maximus Hero. This is a combo that's going to deliver awesome 4K performance if you really cannot compromise when it comes to frame rate, resolution, and visual fidelity. To put simply, the RTX 4090, while extortionately expensive, has no direct competition from AMD. Not even the 7900XTX comes close to the performance available from the mighty 4090 and of course Intel's i9-14900K. I'll link all the parts mentioned today down in the description below and a write-up on our website where you can learn more about all the combos discussed. If you enjoyed this one, get subscribed, drop a like rating and as always we'll see you in the next one.